My name's Ray Simmons, and I'm a physicist at NIST, and I'm working on quantum information with superconducting circuits. In a quantum mechanical world, some of the bizarre things that can happen are particles can be in two places at once. And by particles, I mean anything like an atom or an electron, things that make up matter, or even a very small piece of matter, like just a small piece of metal. Those things can be in two places at once. That just doesn't make sense to us. I mean, you know, we're not familiar with things doing that. If a particle can be in two places at once, or it can be doing two different things at the same time, uh, that can be useful if you are talking about information, because it means that if you say you want to calculate something, and you are trying to calculate something with numbers, uh, your little registers of those numbers, those little memory elements that are usually called bits, and we call those quantum bits, those elements can be in two different, they can represent two different numbers at the same time. And that allows them to actually do logic, where they can do logic operations, uh, two different logic operations at the same time, or multiple logic operations at the same time. That allows you to do much, much faster in computing, and that's why a lot of people um, associate quantum information with just the struggle to try to make a quantum computer. We're actually trying to do something with artificial atoms or circuits. And one easy analogy is to think about that real atoms have electrons flying around a nucleus, and a circuit has electrons flying around inside the wires. So all we're really trying to do is, is take electrons that are oscillating around an atom and make a similar type thing, but the electrons are oscillating, say, back and forth in an electrical circuit. Other than that, the, the physical description of the two systems is basically the same. The great thing about artificial atoms is most all of them are built by putting them on a small microchip. You're building up layers and layers of circuitry all on a small chip. And the nice thing about that is you can make many, many, many copies of them and stitch them all together and make a larger and larger system. So a qubit is an analogy to a classical bit or a regular what we call bits in computer science where you have a switch or a transistor and it can be in two states. It's either considered off or on. So that's usually labeled as a zero and a one. So a quantum bit is sort of the same thing, but what we're doing is we're taking the quantum states of a system, and it can have many, many states, and we isolate two of those, and we call one of them a zero and one of them a one. So what we need to be able to do is set up that quantum system in either one of those states and read it out, be able to measure it and say, oh, it's a zero or it's a one. So it's analogous to a regular bit, but it's quantum. The quantum part comes in because that bit can also be zero and one at the same time, and you can't do that with a classical bit. So NIST was one of the first places in the artificial atom community to make a quantum bus. And what that was for was for transferring quantum information from one of these qubits or artificial atoms to another qubit or artificial atom. And that's useful because if you're going to try to make some kind of a computer or even some larger quantum system, you need atoms in different places to be able to talk to each other. When I was a kid, I always played with stuff. I mean, I was in the garage tinkering and messing around. I think it's the same story you hear from every scientist is they were fascinated by how things work. Why do they do what they do? How does this work? Uh, I have a little boy who's like 11 months old now and he's playing around with stuff. I mean, there's just a natural inkling, I think, to try to figure out what is going on. Why does this thing do this? Because as we know, if you know how things work, you can either uh, make things work for you or you can stay out of trouble. I mean, whichever way, you really need to know how things work. So that's how it all started. I just kept asking questions. Why does this do that? Why does this do that? I want to know this. I want to know that. And so what people do is push you into science courses.